I had some questions about uh, doing the battery relocation. And one of them was um, putting a capacitor bank up front. And it works fine. Uh, so it's totally something you can do. But uh, typically capacitors are between your battery and amplifier, not between your alternator and your battery. So there's that to consider also. Um, another question people had, oh hey the car audio guy, how's it going? Um, was cooling for the alternator. So one thing I've seen people do after you've gotten rid of your battery is they, you know, put a cover over this and they'll actually cut a hole here in the fender well and put like a PVC tube in there and then they'll direct it and put like an Atwood fan pointed directly at the alternator so it's drawing cool air in from outside your fender well here and straight across over your alternator and it actually helps keep your alternator cooler by doing that so that's something to consider which if you have a big battery here you can't do that uh, and we all know that keeping your alternator cool you know increases performance yet again so aside from the battery reduced performance being up here in the heat you also can by moving it increase your performance of your alternator by getting better cooling to it um, when I was uh, powering my house recently because of the storm it knocked the power out so I was running a power inverter off my car audio batteries and I was using my truck to power the house I actually put some little heat sinks from uh, computers in on here uh, you can still see the marks and it actually helped quite a bit um, drawing the heat away from the alternator had nice fins and with the fan here pulling air across it uh, it definitely helped so that's another thing to consider um, if you guys have any more questions feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them anyways I had a, just wanted to give a quick little update to the questions people had and see if I had any more here Looks like just the car audio guy commented. I'm doing good. How about yourself? Anyways, thanks for watching. And like I said, if you guys have any more questions about this kind of thing, just feel free to ask. Let's see if my truck's unlocked. And here I have my headway bank that I built. So there's 38, 120 HP. Um, no, you're not late to the party. I actually just started this video. Uh, so these are 16 amp hour banks. And there's three 16 amp hour banks here. And then this is another battery. Uh, it's some 43 amp hour prototype cells. They're Life Epo 4 also. And then I have a Batcap X700 down there. There's two NVX 2700.1s. 10 10 inch NVX VCWs. And I don't know, a lot of people don't realize that I actually have a clear plexiglass window in the back of my port. Oh, you're going to run the Life Epo 4 as well? Awesome. Um. Life Epo 4, 
which is safer. LTO is definitely safer, without a doubt. Um, you also get better voltage with LTO. Uh, it's a it's not a port it's a hole uh, that's a port bro <laughs> no tuning properties whatsoever oh, that's funny okay so the advantages and disadvantages so the advantages of lto is you actually get higher voltage so these batteries are a nominal 12.8 volts. LTO is a nominal 13.8 volts. So the LTO sits a volt higher to begin with. And the safety LTO is definitely safer. Um, I believe actually some of the B2s uh, had these headway cells in them. How many alts? I actually just have the factory stock 110 amp alternator on this truck and it doesn't put out anywhere near 110 amps anymore. And I'm able to hold 12.4, 12.5 volts with this in here. And I'm actually clamping uh, about 2000, it depends on the frequency. I'd say on average about 2,000 watts RMS per amplifier I'm clamping. Uh, certain frequencies I'm able to get about 2,200 watts RMS. So 4,400 RMS and I'm able to hold plenty. Uh, all four channels? No, these are uh, mono amplifiers. I do have a four channel on the other side. Here, I'll open it up for you. Yeah, the B2 probably does have a, um, a safety board inside. But they really, like, the BMSs that come in a lot of these batteries don't actually do a whole lot. Like, a lot of them can't even protect against, like, the amount, like, you need a very expensive BMS to be able to fully protect the bank like what we use. And I just can't see a company even putting something like that in there. They have, like, a basic balancer and a basic BMS that does basic functions but when you're talking like um the size batteries we use a bms to do what it needs to is really expensive i mean you're talking like a thousand dollars just for the bms so i haven't installed my new amplifier yet but i'm rocking a good old Sony ES four channel amplifier in here. Good old school. Love these things. Let's see if we can get a better shot from the front. One ohm stable old school Sony ES. Built in fans. It has this amplifier is actually really unique. It has like holes cut through the circuit board so the amp or the fans actually push air right through the circuit board it's amazing you don't even see anything like that today but yeah a lot of people uh, think that this is just a hole it's not just a hole it's actually a port and that it's a three-quarter inch plexiglass back window so i can still see out the back Cause in a big truck like this it's you know really hard to see in the first place uh, 
I also got an AGM in the mix as well. It's split charge system. However, this part of the circuit when the car is running. Yep. Yeah. So you can mix AGM with life EPO four cells, uh, which you can't with LTO. But the thing is, is the AGM actually holds your life EPO four back. Um, Resting voltage in here, I'm at 13.6 is where it floats at. And if I had an AGM attached to it, it'd be like 13. So there's that to consider also. And yeah, I've, I had someone ask about what, where my fuse is. Well, here's my fuse. Right there. <laughs> and not in this door but in my other door I have a cable cutter when I go to shows I usually I throw my titanium scissors in this side and then Harbor Freight you can go and pick one of these up for like six bucks cheap simple cable cutter That's what you want to have. Every base head vehicle should have a cable cutter. Like you should buy one of these. And a fire extinguisher. Every base head vehicle in my opinion should have those. Yeah, I'd get rid of the AGM. If you have plenty of reserve with lithium... There's no reason to keep your AGM. I'm not sure why people do. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best cable cutter, but for six bucks to make sure you have one in your vehicle, do it. <laughs> I've heard people say you only get like 50 cuts out of one of these and then they're too dull to even use, but... I've never had a lithium go up in flames. In fact... None of these are balanced. There's no balance board, no BMS, anything. And I've been running headways for oops, probably close to two years now. I've never had a problem with them. They don't even go out of balance. An isolator. Well, why would you want to run an isolator? Like what, what's really the point? Like, just to have a spare battery sitting there? I, I don't quite understand the why people want an isolator. Like, if you have enough AGM to support, or enough lithium to support what you're doing, there's really no point in keeping the AGM. It takes up space, adds weight, it's not anything useful. Want to isolate the primary from the auxiliary systems. Well, I mean, in car audio, this is my primary system. So what's my auxiliary? This is what, what I'm getting at. Like, What's the average life of a headway? So they're rated for 4,000 cycles. Um... So, it really depends on how often you cycle them, how hard you cycle them, and you can get more than the rated cycles out of them. LTO actually has uh, 20 to 30,000 cycles, so that's another big benefit of LTO is that you're going to have way longer lifespan with it. Um, so if you're going to run, let's see here, what'd that say? Uh, use the AGM to run the car and the lithiums to run the audio and use an isolator to isolate the two circuits. So in that case, you'd want two alternators. 
you wouldn't want to run one alternator in an isolator. An isolator is not meant for two totally different chemistries for two totally different voltages. I think that's a big misunderstanding that people have. Isolators were not intended for that. They were intended to isolate two of the same types of batteries. They weren't intended to isolate two totally different batteries from each other. If you want to run a split system, you should have an alt alternator and a circuit directed to the AGM and a separate alternator and another circuit directed strictly to the lithium. Doing an isolator is kind of like a, I don't know, it seems like a cheap, like wannabe option to me. It doesn't seem like something you typically should be doing. I've never run an isolator in my setups because there's not a need to. I have battery isolators, but I don't use them. Let's see here, what were the other questions? Uh, battery life. Am I able to give you a demo? Hmm. I don't know if my neighbor would be too pleased about that. I do have uh, videos of me giving demos at a show recently, so. Forty amp hours a uh, headway be sufficient. Um. So. 40 amp hours of headway, I would say, is good for about 4,000 watts RMS. 5K is pushing it. Uh, if you did, what, 32 amp hour to support 8K? Hell no. Hell no. Unless you have an 8K rated amplifier that only does 2,000 watts. Yeah. <laughs> But if you have an 8K amplifier that actually does 8K, 32 amp hour is not enough. I mean, I have 48 amp hour in here, okay? So there's 48 amp hour of headways and another 43 amp hour of these prototype cells. And I'm running 4400 RMS clamped true rms these are 2700.1s so say what 5400 rms rated and i'm getting a legit 4400 rms clamped real power and i'm able to draw these down to about 12.4 volts Yeah, Death Bounce, Apocalypse, 4K. You know, if you guys can, you, you really should look into doing Yinlongs or LTO cells instead. Because they far outperform the headways. I mean, I love my headways, but I'm not going to bullshit you guys. The Yinlongs will outperform these, like, hands down. You're a whole nother volt higher to start with. And so these will float up at like 13.6 volts without an AGM attached to them. The Yin Longs will float up in the, you know, 14.8. If you shut your car off at 14.8, they're going to float at 14.8 volts. And their nominal voltage on Yin Longs is 13.8, so you're holding higher voltage. Actually, I'll go show you guys some other cells that I have. Hopefully my reception holds up good in the garage. It's a mess. Oh yeah, my lawnmower is even lithium. I got a snapper 58 volt 
lithium lawnmower. I love this thing. Battery on the charger here. It's great. I don't have to worry about gas cans and gas and all that kind of crap. So, here's some other cells. So, here's the Yinlong. These are uh, 35 amp hour cells. And here's the 40 amp hour cell. You can see they're the same size. Uh, here's the LiFePo 4 cells that are in my truck. These are some NMC cells. These are LTO pouch cells. They're a Microvast 10 amp hour. Uh, these are K2 cells. To, uh, these are just like you would find in a JY power battery. So yeah. Um, yeah, so C-Max cells, uh, they're, they're not new user friendly at all. I would not recommend them to new builders whatsoever. They need to be built 100% properly or you're going to have problems. That's why we see so many people have problems with C-Max cells. I bet you there's more people using Yinlongs and we barely ever see any problems the only problems you ever see are people who put their banks right together like that and then the cells rub together and they rub through this protective coating and the whole body of the cell is actually part of the electrode and they short out c-max they're like these cells these will actually puff up if they're not compressed properly so they need to be in case completely perfect um, I'm not sure on the rating on C-Max cells but some of the cells are 300 pounds of pressure that they need to be able to withstand the case needs to be able to withstand and I'm sorry but even a wood box like this is not enough it's just not. They need to be like C Maxes, they come in a steel case from the factory. So that should tell you something right there. If they put them in a steel case, you probably should too. Um, they also have BMS and cooling and everything else, which nobody in car audio is doing. I mean, you see typical balance boards, but it's not a full BMS. Uh, so excess power they offer plug and play options uh, JY power you can get a CES battery custom electric service with the inlongs in it um, limitless I believe they're using skib cells in their new batteries so there's plenty of plug and play options if you don't want a DIY um, there is somebody who actually builds with C-Max cells that's pretty good. I believe it's Eric Ensley, I think is his name. He sells them on eBay. He sells them in the original case, unlike a lot of these guys selling them in a freaking wood box. Because I, I just don't agree with the wood box for C-Max at all. And even a lot of the metal cases that these guys are building aren't proper at all and that's that's why we see so many problems with them people just don't build properly with them they don't want to use the factory metal case because it's one cell too big i would just put a spare cell in the case not have it banked up and use the factory case but i guess people's ocd kicks in and they don't want one extra cell in their case. They want to build one out of wood or whatever crap they have laying around, which I don't agree with.
Oh, what was the other comment here? Would you go back in into the cube? Oh, hell yeah, I'd go back in the cube. The cube was intense. That was so much fun. And I waited till after pretty much when Slamology was done to go into the cube so I could actually take some time and play around in it, you know, like sit there and bullshit with Travis, the guy who built the cube. Uh, it, it was a blast. Like, I actually got to spend a decent amount of time in it, whereas most people just uh, get the demo from the show and, you know, like we actually got to turn it up and, you know, play 15 hertz and, you know, do the fun things that most people don't get to ever do. Did he say what he does? Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, and I mean, people do, some some people do fine with C-Max batteries, but I just don't agree with them. I mean, especially for new users. If I think you're talking about Devin Crawford. He's super experienced with lithium batteries. He's not a fresh chicken, you know, a fresh spring chicken doing this. Like, he's been messing with lithium batteries longer than I have so he knows his shit um but for a new user hell no like like I said Devin knows what the hell he's doing um, for numbers so I know he's done upwards of like a 68 in the cube Yeah, and I haven't uploaded the video yet, but there's a guy at Slamology that was running... Oh, what was it? Uh, I don't know. It's a stupid amount of power, like 60,000 watts with these right here. And in Europe... And Russia, these are far more popular. They don't have C Max cells, and they don't they don't even screw with importing them. These are just far better. And okay, so a C Max cell, you're talking six thousand cycles life. These are twenty thousand cycles at ten C, or no five C. And 25,000 cycles at 2C and 30,000 cycles at 1C. So these are going to outlast CMAX cells 3 to 1. I mean, you're going to go through three banks before you'd go through a bank of these. And I think a lot of people don't figure that in. They look at, oh, I can get a cheap cell. You know, it's easily available. And that's that's you know what they do they don't think of well a couple of years down the road or anything like that and another thing is is yeah the c-max cells are cheap but the balancer the casing everything else that goes into building a c-max bank you're pretty much breaking even with these and you have so much reduced cycle life like it just doesn't make sense What else do I have? Oh, you guys like my old fourth order? 12 12s? That's what was in the Tahoe. But, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. The back... Back door's leaked. 
and it ruined the back corner of the box. So that's why that got pulled out. And also for 1212s, this one inch MDF, <laughs> it didn't hold up. It was flexing like hell. What happens when they get old? Uh, so C-Max cells, they'll just, they pretty much just fall on their face when, the, when they get old. And they run out of cycle life, they just fall right on their face. Um, and you just have dead cells. Uh, my build with the 1010 inch NVX right now. I metered it last week and it did a 154.2 at 40 hertz. Uh, actually, it did it at 39, 40, and 41 hertz. All three frequencies were the same score. This build, I believe, did like a 156 something before it blew the windshield out and after the windshield blew out it was that was that score dropped from there how do i meter um let's see if i have it sitting out here still where did i go with it hmm. i was doing deadener today in a guy's car I got quite a mess. Oh, I don't even have my stuff in here. Term lab. Uh, it's under this pile of crap. So, dual sensor term lab. And then I have the laptop. And so, my meter scores were. probably still see the suction cup marks right here and then on the same spot driver side over there so I I was metering both sides to see how how much difference it was uh, so a lot of people say there isn't a difference between a demo build and an SPL build and there is actually quite a bit of difference between a demo build and an SPL build. If I was doing SPL, which they meter on the dash right here, I would not have done a center port. I would have did a driver side port, probably less subs. Um, yeah, I would have done less subs. I probably would have did nine subs instead. And... Like I said, I would have did a driver's side port, so that way it meters higher here. Whereas I'm doing equal scores within like 0.1 dB from side to side. You get in an SPL vehicle, you measure that side, and you measure this side, there's a huge difference. So that's the difference between a demo build and an SPL build. Like people say there isn't a difference, but there is a difference. Oh yeah, people love when I turn it up. I bet you the neighbors just absolutely love me. Is anyone still rock sealed? Um, not really. Uh, so my version of a sealed box would be this. Fourth order. Fourth order band pass is by far the way to go. Like if you want to do sealed and you want to get the the best of both worlds, fourth order for the win. Sealed, you just lose so much output, and I I just don't I don't really do sealed anymore. I did a sealed wall back in the day, and I mean it was punchy, but. I just cut a hole in it. I didn't even like put a port in it. I just cut a hole in it and I gained, 
I bet you two decibels like that. So, yeah, sealed is kind of out. And then after I did a proper port, it was it was way better. Um. Got some good old kicker action here, some Kenwood, MTX, Caption Audio, SPL Max. These are actually really good subs. This is a Canadian brand. Don't see many of them in the United States. And I'm sure you guys in Europe definitely don't see very many of them. Some JBL, Rockford... Um, it's more Rockford, JBL, Kicker, all kinds of stuff. I know a lot of people seem to think that I only run one brand or whatever, but this is just like the shit sitting in my garage. <laughs> well, I mean, these subs aren't shit shit either. They're just the random stuff. Like, I keep all the good stuff in the house. I really should have that sub in the house because I really like that one. Our Wolfram subs good. Yeah, Wolframs are good. Bam. Wolfram. And some scar boxes. NVX. More Wolfram. I like Wolfram's products. The W3000.1s, great amps. Pretty much every amp I've had from Wolfram has been great. There's my power inverter I used to power my house when the power was out. Use 2 gauge, well, 1 odd it is, or 2 odd. <laughs> This is that new NVX sound dampening material I put in today. It actually worked really good. DC Audio Elites. I love them. Awesome subs. They look great. They sound great. Totally love them. I actually like a lot of brands. People don't think that like I like a lot of brands or that I'm a brand nut hugger, but I actually like a lot of brands. Uh, you know, Sundown, DC, FI. I mean, pretty much everything. I I I like it all. Rockford T2 subs. Do you have the Rockford subs? Um, I don't have any T2s. But I have like the old Punch DVCs. Uh, there's a couple more right there. Uh, that's a Punch P2. Down in the basement I have a, a P3 and a T1. Um, I have a bunch of different punch series subs, uh, HX2s, HE2s, man, I have a, I have a bunch of Rockford subs. I don't have any of the T2s though, none of the real, real big ones. Pioneer Premieres. I love these subs. I had one time I had uh, 12 12s of these in a, one of my cars on super low power. I had three of these 1200 watt amplifiers and it just sounded great. Wasn't the loudest thing in the world, but man, did it sound good. Some morels. Yeah. 
So I'm not partial to any brand specifically. I like them all. <laughs> Sundown SA or an XFL? Sundown SA all day. I don't know. I haven't used the new XFLs, but I've used some of the older ones, and I, I would take the Sundown SA hands down. Without a doubt. And they're, ha they're coming out with a new version of the Sundown SA, which I would say would probably destroy the new version of the XFL just go send down I've had a bunch of American base I mean American base isn't bad um, I kind of don't really like the name because they say American base and nothing's made in America You'd think American base would be American, but it's not. It's hard to get Sundown in the UK? Why is that? You guys don't have any dealers for Sundown over there? Boy, the car audio guy, you should, you should hit up Jacob Fuller, and you should be a dealer over there. No joke. Somebody should. go worldwide with that everywhere needs some sundown let's talk about hot and cold charging well the cooler you have your alternator the better do I use welding cable or car audio cable well and I'll go back over here. I use both. So this is EB Flex welding cable. And here's why I don't like the EB Flex welding cable. See how bad the jacket pulls? Like you can actually pull the jacket even more. It's like it just flexes right back, no problem. I know people hate me for saying this because they love their welding cable, but look at that. Look how far I can pull that jacket back. You can't do that with the car audio cable. There's new concepts, NVX, oh, new concepts. I like silver tinned OFC. I don't, I don't care what brand it is. Like that's NVX brand, Silver Tindo FC. Uh, new concepts, Colossus Flex, mm, Colossus Flex down there too. The candy cable. Yeah, American Base is located in Ohio. Absolutely none of their products are made in Ohio. That's like one of the things that like... Yeah, I love the new Concepts wire. But yeah... American base, so those amps that you guys are talking about, they're made in Korea, not America. Um, most of the subwoofers are made in China. There's, nothing's really made here. Actually, I'll go give you guys a little shot of my big build that I'm going to be doing soon. Oh, dog. Move. Come on. He's getting old. He don't want to move.
Oh, what did that comment say? Most things that are made in car audio are just assembled here. True. But, uh, like Hutchinson Audio, they machine all their metal here. They assemble everything here. You know, like some of the basics, like the basket and whatever, that just doesn't make absolutely any sense to build here, isn't built here. Yeah, great guard dog. He's just laying in front of the door. Uh, I've never been out to the West Coast coast for shows but yeah this is what I'm gonna be building with super rare pioneer premier 15s yeah these are these are super rare. So like the 12 inch model, they made thousands of these. The 15s though, they didn't make very many. I've heard rumors that it was as low as 50 subwoofers made. And I have seven of them right here. So if there was 50 of them, I have almost a tenth of the subwoofers that were ever made. Or a tenth of the... Pioneer Premier 15s that were ever made. <laughs> Almost. Not quite. So I got like, what, 15th? Something like that. And I was trying to do Pioneer Premier amplifiers to power the build, but I just can't find enough of them. I am going to be doing like, I have an old Pioneer Premier 4 channel. The built-in fans. I'm going to be using that in the build. I have the old two channels. The 220X. I'll be using those. Uh, this is actually the biggest Pioneer Premier amplifier ever made. It's a D2000 SPL. It's actually... A 2500 watt RMS amplifier. These are the 1200 watt RMS amplifiers. Some good old JBL, old Pioneer, JL 500 slash ones. Good old amps, love these things. But yeah, these Pioneer premieres are no joke. Uh, the 12s. The big SPL model. That thing's 76 pounds. As you can see, that thing's no joke. And then the 15s, they're 92 pounds. What's with the paper on it in the back? Oh, that one? That one's blown. Okay. Um, and I was mocking up parts for it. So that's what the inside of one looks like. But as you can see, a normal 15 inch cone don't fit. <laughs> So, I just keep a piece of paper over it to keep any dust out of the gap right now. And I have a pair of blown 12s. I plan on rebuilding someday. What do I think about Teramps on digital? I actually like the Brazilian amplifiers. They're tiny, powerful. Uh, benefit of running all the batteries in the back instead of up front. So that's my last video I did. 
and the benefit is your front battery is not getting hot so at a recent show I was at the the guy had a battery bank in the back and a battery up front his battery under the hood was swelling I bet you it was swelled out that far like half to three quarters of an inch on each side it was swelled out just from being in such extreme heat and that's so bad for your battery like you shouldn't be doing that and that's why you'd want to run all your batteries in the back rather than up front I haven't had the best luck with sound cube in the past so I don't know what can I do to keep them cool well so you want your batteries in the back for sure you definitely don't want them under the hood in Arizona and I mean if you have AC in your vehicle that's pretty much the best you're going to be able to do I mean below that what else you got you really can't do much PCM regulated at alts and lithium. So PCM, you're probably stuck with lower voltage and you're probably stuck with running life EPO4, sadly. So there's really not much you can do. Uh, get, a, get a new alternator. Get a new alternator that's internally regulated. Put up with the dash light that says you're not charging or whatever. Screw it. Oh, it's awesome meeting EXO. He's a great guy. Love his videos. Yeah, actually quite a few companies run uh, water cooling for their battery. But if everything is 120 degrees, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you can't cool your batteries below that. Some old GPI subs. Coils were still great. The surrounds are what went bad on those. Mm. Actually, I have something cool I was wanting to do. I have 44 of these. Not sure what I want to do with them yet, but old school thumps tiny little magnet but I have 44 of them so I'm gonna do something not sure what yet but yes I do have my NVX X series still it's uh, downstairs Yeah, so that's why water cooling really wouldn't matter for us. I mean, if everything's hot, the water is going to be that temperature too. The air you're pushing through, it's going to be that same temperature. You're not really going to get much cooling. Some old school sound streams. Sony, bunch of Pioneer speakers. Old Sony ES amplifier. It's a cutoff voltage for LTO bank. 12 volts. Pretty much you hit 12 volts and you just crash right after that in the 6S configuration. So your voltage is from, I would say, you can run up to like 16.2 to 12 volts, it'd be your voltage. Next big game changer in car audio. 
Um, I'm not really sure what the next big game changer will be. With lithium, we pretty much had that big change. Um, I think really what needs to improve is subwoofer efficiency. That needs to improve a lot. It's the most inefficient. Like, basically, subwoofers are just heaters. <laughs> like, that is by far the thing that needs to change the most in car audio. We have plenty of power. We can throw watts at it all day. Uh, we have plenty of battery to support that. The problem is, is efficiency in the drivers. So I think that's where the biggest improvement would be. Uh, somebody needs to come up with something. <laughs> Oh, where'd the comments go? Um, so with high voltage amplifiers, that gets dangerous. There's a big problem with that. So, like, Teramps makes a 160,000 watt RMS amplifier, and it's like 900 bucks. It's stupid cheap. The problem is, is the voltage is so dangerous, you can kill yourself. So, I don't really see that being a thing. Uh, they did higher volt amps in the past too. And like, it just, I actually see a lot of companies going back to 12 volt. So like take sundown for, for example, they had 18 volt amplifiers. They're going back down to 12 volt. Uh, a lot of other companies that did 18 volt amplifiers, they're just gone. Doesn't make any sense when we have lithium now. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well bring this up. So, SCAR RP2000. Third, I've had three of these die in customers' vehicles. And the funny thing is, is you can't even see anything burnt. No parts out of place, nothing. And these amplifiers are dying. And if I throw it on a scope... The sine wave is just all over the freaking place. It's just ridiculous. Um, I totally do not recommend this amplifier. I, I know a lot of people, they're like, oh, it, it amp dyno is great. It sure does. But it, in real world application, it doesn't hold up well at all. Um, one of the people I swapped out for audio pipe, APM N2000. And uh, the other two people, they went to Wolfram C2400s, and they absolutely love them. Same builds, and the audio pipe and the Wolfram's doing just fine. And the scars died in. Each of them was right around, well, less than two, three months. So, would not do those. Yeah. Would you use a 12 volt amp in a Tesla? Yes. So the way the Tesla works is it has a 12 volt system for all the vehicle electronics. It has a power inverter that takes the what was it like 330 volts or something like that and steps it down to a 12 volt so I don't know if you if you go back in my videos I actually did uh, some work with a Tesla um, Model S but uh, if you go back and look I think I did some videos showing like how the 
12 volt and 300 volt system works. So they put a lead acid battery in the Tesla for the 12 volt side and actually swap over to some lithium. You're far better off, but yeah. So you would run a 12 volt amp in a Tesla. I am not part of any car audio clubs or teams. I'm team me. I don't really want to be tied down by a team or by a sponsor for that matter. Like I could have plenty of sponsors. I just don't really want to be stuck to a company. And Sundown Demo Van at Slamology. I'm not sure which Sundown Demo Van you're talking about. Because there was a ton of them. <laughs> yep. I think he was having problems when I was over there. I seen him playing later on, but I know one of them was having voltage issues. C Max problems. And the pink sundown big left thing here. Um, so they weren't playing that at Slamology. The S the Project SPL, Derek Haddox build. Yeah. He wasn't playing that. I did uh sit in Brad Criswell's build. So that is 12 15 inch sundown ZV5s. That thing was awesome. Fourth order, absolutely loved it. That, that was my favorite daily build. Because that thing played highs, it played lows, it played everything. It was just great. I think I'm going to wrap this up, though. I've been going for about an hour now, so <laughs> it's way longer than I had planned on. But I'm glad you guys like the live stream and getting asked questions. If you guys think I should do this again, be sure to like, comment, and all that stuff. Let me know. Like, if if you guys actually like this, I'll I'll do live streams more often. I think I'll actually set something up. Nick Hutchinson's build? Loved it. Yeah, I was in, in that build. Uh, actually, me and Nick Hutchinson were playing around in the cube after Slamology. It was fun. <laughs> Nick's good shit. I, I like him. And yeah, that, that build is awesome. Yeah, I should do some more live stream stuff. I'm glad glad to see some good feedback. I didn't really have I don't have more of that many viewers right now, but I mean, you guys that are in here are actually active enough that this was fun for me too. So something I'll probably end up doing again. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh Go check out some of my old videos. I got like 2,300 of them. It's all kinds of cool shit. Thanks again.